Flowers pulling themselves out from a melted blanket of snow. The petals stained red from a writhing creature. Feeble attempt to escape a well-placed snare. A drop of water hits their eye from an icicle at the mercy of the sun above. But what truly traps a monster? Is it the metal sharpened teeth and a triggered pressure plate? Or maybe it's the daggers of ice above and the creature's struggle shaking the branches enough for them to fall. Something all trappers must consider for can you truly claim a kill if nature is the one bearing the weapon? Remember to always kill what you trap and eat what you kill. Happy hunting out there, folks. We we'll hope you join us here for dinner at the Velvet Lodge. And welcome to the Velvet Lodge. Our story begins in the cold, a biting and violent cold. You have all been invited to something only disclosed to you as an ongoing hunt at the Velvet Lodge. A letter you received a week ago has been placed on either your doorstep or mailbox. Black seal and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dear Nicolette Veritas, Dear Eliza Hill. Dear Bertie Pierce. Dear Melody Cross. Your presence has been requested immediately to assist with an ongoing hunt at the Velvet Lodge. Though it has been a long time since our paths have crossed, my hope is this letter reaches you and tells you how fondly I look back on our memories together. I am in constant reminder that you are not only skilled and knowledgeable, but also that you are determined and eager to see the job through. My wish is that you will consider this form of flattery as also a call to action, as we within the Lodge are in dire need of a person with your abilities. I cannot detail more in this letter in fear of it being intercepted. All I will say is, it's as though my nightmares have personified themselves into this beast. I never so closely have looked into the eyes of death and barely managed to tear my gaze away. To confide in you sincerely, it is not only the biggest creature we have encountered on this mountain, but perhaps maybe the most dangerous. Please visit at your earliest convenience. Please come prepared to finish this monster in which we gave chase for many months. Finally, under no circumstances are you to share any of the information here with anyone else, not even those you trust. I pray you have enough faith in me to heed my warning and know that it is for the greatest good. We may discuss in greater detail when you arrive. Bertram Dupont, the Truffler. Alexander Lynn, the Tanner. Earl Clement, the Angler. Augustina de la Mora Velvet, the Taxidermist. Your immediate suspicions with these letters are up to you, but ultimately you have decided to come and join. You all find yourself standing before a large wooden 
almost cabin-like structure, but far more grand. It's fairly dark, reaching the kind of evening time in the middle of that sort of early onset night that happens only in winter. But the moon is full. What glimmers of it shining through these heavy gray clouds and reflecting off the bright white snow? Besides the whirling wind around you, it's fairly quiet. Do any of you have any aptitudes that would assist you in making out details such as investigation or nature? Yes. I have investigation. Okay. I also have investigation, I believe. For those of you with those aptitudes, you are looking at this structure here and you now notice that you are joined by other people as well. This is something that all of you recognize, that all four of you are here. The immediate thing that you notice with your investigation is above the door, this very large, impressive pair of antlers. The sort of distant light of the moon illuminates just enough to see this array of these almost brutal points, sharp and some looking more organic and tangled like branches. They look new and pristine, even though the rest of the lodge is fairly older. Nicolette, if you would please introduce yourself. My name is Nicolette Veritas. I am a forensic investigator in the city of Atlanta. I am a taller woman with red hair that has silver streaks in it. I wear glasses perched on the end of my nose, carry myself very dignified and properly, uh, one might say ladylike. I give off an aura of being somewhat reserved and calculating. So as um, you all are sort of cusping onto the top of this mountain where the Velvet Lodge sits, um, you can see Nicolette here sort of investigating the front and you as well kind of um, coming up behind and all of you sort of um, diverging on this one point. Um, Nicolette, also with your job, your specific in decomposition, um, you're also able to ascertain these antlers from what you know of bone and how things um, age and mature. They're probably fairly new. You especially can tell this. Who would be after Nicolette walking up? I think I would actually be because un unlike Nicolette, uh, Eliza Trask Hill is very interested in getting here as quickly as possible and is a little more hurried and a little more impatient and a little more excited. Uh, I'm a relatively average woman, very short hair, um, very clean, but also rough appearance. So uh, pants, shirt, vest are all, seem to be in the right place. But if you look a little closer, they're maybe a little old, maybe a little used. I'm definitely moving with a lot more interest and curiosity and checking everything out and coming closer. And then as I would stand nearby you, I would definitely give you a very appraising look and say, are you also coming here? Oh, yes, yes. Nicolette Veritas. Oh, oh, Eliza Hill. Very nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Do have you been here before? This is very impressive. I have not. This is my first time here and I am interested to see what the inside looks like. This is beautiful. Well, best not to keep them waiting. It's cold out here. Indeed. Melody, where are you? Uh, I think Melody is like struggling with a bigger bag and it's just like, uh, I'll come back for that. And she stands up and starts walking over to join these two ladies. And she walks with a dignified air, but not as refined, I think, as Nicolette. And she looks at you two and is taken aback at first, but says, oh, hello, it's, it's nice to meet you. My name is Melody. Are you here for the lodge as well? Yes. Ah, yes, Nicolette Veritas. Oh, very good to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Eliza Trask Hill, we were actually just about to go inside. Oh, so good. You arrived just in time and I will come speeding down the corner, feeling like I'm late. <laughs> okay. 
and just like that stop on a dime where the back wheels pick up a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then rushing out with my purse and everything, you see a square 411 woman. Clearly her face is older than the bottle dyed black hair that she has. And she has a fur coat that is clearly fake. About three different purses of varying sizes. <laughs> and rushing out and just rushing. Oh, there's more people here. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. I didn't know this was going to be like a girl's night. This is so fun. Well, apparently it is. Hi. Oh, Liza Trask Hill. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Bertie Pierce. Hi. Hello, Bertie. I am Nicolette Veritas. Nice to meet you, Nicolette. What do you all do, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, um, it doesn't... Not to be f for forward, but none of us look like hunters in a lodge of hunters. Well, I'm a little close, I guess. Oh, well, I'm oh. I'm a secretary in the meantime. Mm. Uh, I work for, it's a traded company, it's stupid. I've been, but I've been working there for 25 years, faithful service. Uh, but treasure. in the meantime, when I'm off work, I teach self-defense at the YMCA. Oh. Melody kind of settles up next to you a little bit more. I was like, well, that's wonderful to hear. What about you? I'm actually, I run a newspaper called the Zenith News. It's a smaller kind of paper, mostly freelancers. And I've, I've been traveling a bit. I'd like to think, well, I don't know if I'd call it hunting, but I definitely have done my, my fair share of investigations, let's say. That's only hunting for clues. You know, that's a very good way of putting it. I am a forensic investigator from Atlanta. Uh, oh. I primarily work with dead bodies. Fascinating. Morbid. Oh. I mean, most of the men I work with practically are dead bodies, so it's not too different. Certainly. I can't wait to find out what that means, Birdie. They're just old as hell. And I, I don't know if you said what, what you do, or? I just, I, I take care of my kids. Oh, Excellent. that's wonderful. How many do you have? Three. Um, uh, the twins and then the younger girl. They're very, very beautiful. And she reaches into her <laughs> little bag and is like, look, they're stunning little kids. Oh, they're so cute. And she just starts literally flipping through like a family photo album. <laughs> full size. Birdie's full rapt attention. Just like, oh. okay. And then there's Skylar on his second birthday. Oh, how cute. I would love to see all of your pictures, but it's also uh, cold and wet and disgusting out here. Why don't we get inside and get close to a fire and then we can figure out what, what more is going on? You turn back towards the, the lodge itself. These large logs kind of building out the exterior of it, a stone foundation. And you can see from the front a little bit from the side kind of view of it that it sits almost on this cliffside of like the bottom floor kind of extends out past and there's sort of these large wooden um, rafter beams that hold it onto the side of the mountain. The entrance, a grand green colored door with a sort of frosted glass uh, window. The exterior walls are decorated with tools and sort of historical looking hunting equipment. Something that you notice now that you're approaching it is the windows and the the glass on the green door are dark almost pitch black inside which seems odd considering that you assume they were expecting people what kind of antlers were above the door make a either i will let you do acumen or intuition Academics, nature, whatever aptitudes would kind of apply there. It's going to be science. Go for it. And I will use acumen. Could I also roll this? Absolutely. And I'm going to use academics to upgrade. Okay. As far as mechanics, I'm going to add two more d8s to this using six seconds off my clock. Okay. I have one success. One success? Three hits. Okay. Nicolette, you sort of are looking at these pair of antlers. At first, you're almost certain that they're fake mm -hmm. um, because there's too many points. They're kind of an odd and strange shape. Um, very notorious hunting lodge. You don't yeah. think that they would put anything fake on their front door. Mm -hmm. You're not able to ascertain what kind of antlers they are. Okay. 
Melody, on the other hand, looking at it, you sort of have the same initial reaction of like, I've seen tacky decor before. I would say you are not able to necessarily identify what kind of antlers they are, but just that you have never seen a pair of like them before. Those are incredible wall decor we have above the door, ladies. There's decor above the door? The antlers. Oh! Those are very large. I don't know what those came from. Well, I'm gonna go get a fire started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I start knocking on the door? Okay. <laughs> so as you sort of knock on the door, the glass inside um, sort of has that thick sound to it of, you know, when glass is yeah. nicely made. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're sort of hitting on it, um, you can't see anything really coming or moving inside. You can see just barely in the sort of center foyer where you can just like immediately see is a very very dim light and you can see a table central there. You can also see that atop it is something medium in size and rectangular in shape but with the night and kind of the details being blurred it's hard to make out exactly what it is. There's something inside on that table in there. Um... Is the door locked? <laughs> you can open it. It's unlocked. But you see that from sort of the knob area to where the latch sort of would be, there's this odd string of this fuzzy rubber-like material mm. holding it shut. It's almost flesh-like and covered in this soft layer of something akin to like a lamb's ear, the plant. Is something it wrong? Why aren't you opening the door? Um, I, um, what is this? <laughs> and I start moving the door to show the, the flesh strand. Does it look like uh, velvet that comes off a deer's antler? You would know that this does look like velvet. Okay. The color of it, however, is normally it's this very tan in color. This is almost a stark white fuzz atop. It looks like velvet shed from antlers, but that color's not normal. I've seen a lot of ways of making sure a door is secure, but this is different. I'm gonna reach out and touch it and kind of feel it and see what does it feel like. So as you sort of reach forward, and touch it for a moment in the back of your head. You almost get that crawling sensation of something goosebumps, but worse. And as you're sort of reacting to it, please add a minute to your clock. You would watch as Eliza would stiffen a little bit and shudder and then almost look more intrigued for a moment and then says, no, this is not anything I, I've ever seen. Uh, and I, I will pull on it to see if I can get it loose. Please make me either a strength and toughness roll. I, I would like a chance to basically examine it as well, but if you're just asking, she would be tugging on it too. So okay. I can do the... Uh, that is no successes. No successes. <laughs> okay, so as you um, sort of pull on it while you're also kind of simultaneously examining it, it almost like in that rubber way kind of just like pulls back into oh. the position that it was in um, with sort of that resistance. Um, kind of feeling it and examining it, you don't imagine that it's particularly hard to get through it if you wanted to break it. I pull out from my uh, bag uh, I have like my my medical examiner's bag. Of course. Uh, I pull out some scissors. Okay. And hold them out to you. No, by all means, they are your scissors. I would not take someone else's implements. Is this like cutting the ribbon when they open things? I suppose oh, I it rather is. It's an <laughs> and I will ribbon. cut it. Okay. So as you um, as you cut it, it. It feels very similar to when you're used to cutting flesh. Mm -hmm. It's thinner, but it also kind of has a little bit of more toughness to it than you're used to. Mm -hmm. um, 
almost like a mix between like a muscle and like a piece of cartilage. Okay. Um, but as you snip across it, it flails open and the door. Do any of you have investigation, nature, or occult? Investigation. Nope. I have both investigation and occult. Okay. I have nothing. <laughs> okay. So as the door opens, for a brief moment, the two of you just faintly hear the moving of something wet and fast. And then as the sound fades out, the lights in the lodge flicker on. Oh. Oh, isn't that fancy? Automatic lights. Go figure. I'd like to take a step inside and see if I can see what made that noise. Okay. Stepping inside, I will let you pick again. Um, you can either do an acumen or intuition with, let's see, I would say probably reaction for the skills. And then you can add one of your aptitudes. Um, so I'll, I'll add investigation. Okay. That is two successes. Two successes? And what's the number I need to tell you on the D4? If it's a one or a four. I got a one. A one? Yes. Okay. So Starting off great. <laughs> Starting off great. You, you have a backup character, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, sure. Mm -hmm. The distress die in this case, you technically still succeed, um, but there is a bit of a complication. As you step inside and you are, you hear the sound and you sort of, your eyes sort of scan around the room, you look and almost like in between the um, log paneling, just ever so slightly this dark sort of almost worming looking smoke emerges and as all the lights come on it almost funnels its way in between all of those cracks and you're sort of taken aback by this this doesn't scare you too much so i'll i'll have you add just a second to your midnight call. and i would you'd hear a gasp but i'm not gonna move back or anything <gasps> what is it is it that pretty inside there's other things going on in here besides the way that the door was closed. Did you hear it too? Oh, I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Yeah. What was that? I don't know. I don't see anything right Something now. moved in there. It sounded... Uh, wet. Well, I know that something's probably a lot warmer than me and I'm just gonna push past them. I'm to just right go behind. inside. Okay. Yeah. I linger on the doorstep. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just walking straight in and just dropping my bags by the door. So as you enter, the lodge inside is basically silent. There's no real noise coming from anywhere that you can ascertain now that you two have heard the first sort of beckoning noise. The thing that stands out to you the most inside the lodge is the smell. You assume that likely it would be worse if not for the cold of the weather, but something similar to a rot stench kind of lives here in the lodge. It's damp in odor, but the inside feels dry and around you dust kind of covers nearly every surface. You know what that is? I bet a pipe burst in here. No, Happens that's, all the time in the winter. That's not a burst pipe. That Usually, is... Augustina is better at keeping things maintained. Why is there so much dust on everything? The lodge also looks nearly abandoned, but as though those who had been occupying it had just left suddenly. You stand sort of in the foyer. Before you, to both your left and right, are these wooden grand staircases. The middle section of them is covered in printed in this intricate carpet. Further into the room is the pedestal table, which you were able to see before. Atop it, an, anor it ornately, ornately, <laughs> an ornately carved and decorated wooden chest. 
the immediate entrance is home to a kind of couple of chairs and a steady, as well as an upright piano on the opposite wall that's sort of butted up against the side of the stairs. Above you, a sort of grand banister that wraps around from the back of the house to the front um, runs around you. And along the floors seems to have begun to be torn and sort of pushed apart by these dying plants, their life likely browned by the harsh winter weather. And along the ceiling and kind of in the corners and on furniture are the spider webs kind of growing over everything. All around you are these mounted taxidermied creatures, but not anything necessarily that you've seen be hunted before. They are they look almost arcane in nature, and you know that likely all of them were processed here in the lodge. Well, it's probably so dusty because hunting's got seasons. You know, you can only hunt like turkeys in the fall, and then you can do fish in some time in the spring. So they're probably just uh, out of season right now. I was under the impression that a companion of mine was going to be here. And maybe, maybe we just got here first. Traffic was real good on my way. I was under the impression that a companion of mine was going to be here and that there was a problem and a hunt going on. And looking at this place, I wonder if there was more going on than just that. They, they seemed nervous. They seemed upset. Oh, do you all know Mr. Clement? No. I don't know a Clement. Oh, Mr. Clement's my friend that invited me here. Ah, my uh, companion is Mr. Dupont. Oh. I wonder if they're hunting buddies. I would imagine so. He mentioned that there were others here. Well, mine is an Alexander Lynn, a friend of mine. Did your messages say anything about a hunt? Because... Yeah, my, mine said, hold on, I got it right here in my pocketbook. Uh, you know, there's, there's this monster, but you know, Mr. Clement is always really, really elaborate with his words. Uh, a big creature on the mountain, and he needs help at the earliest convenience. He says, for the greatest good. And we talk about it when I got here. Now that I have a confirmation that they're here for the same reason I am, mm -hmm. looking around and seeing the disarray and that noise I heard earlier, can I use some of my occult knowledge to try to figure out what do I think might be going on here? I will let you do acumen or intuition. I would say a vigilance or wit skill along with it. Uh, I will do wit and uh, add one for a cult. Yes, so you upgrade your skill die to a d8. And I will also show them my letter. Okay. Uh, to give you guys the opportunity to see that our letters are identical. So I have four successes and another one on the distress die. Okay. <laughs> So, rolling strong. as you're looking around and sort of trying to ascertain um, something occult may be happening here, your immediate sort of interest peaks at the wooden box at that pedestal table. You're not really sure if it's a pull of energy or just a sixth sense per se. Um, but something sort of draws you there. And as you're sort of looking at this box and looking around the room, it's hard to kind of say what happened here or why the lodge is abandoned. Well, this chest seems to be very prominently placed. Maybe there's some information inside. Maybe they left us a note or something. Oh, how wonderful this is like on TV. <laughs> Like a scavenger hunt. How yeah. fun. This is a very disturbing scavenger hunt. Can I throw open the chest? Is it locked or anything like that? So as you approach the chest, mm -hmm. it opens on its own. Oh. oh. By the, you know, the magic. And inside is this. Um. Okay. It says, join us for dinner. And it has a key with... Um, um, 
vegetation on it. Roses. Call your love roses. Jo join us? Does it not say who? No, it just says join us for dinner. Let me see that. I suppose we should find the lock that key goes to then. I agree. It why? I want to compare the handwriting to Earl's. I will have you make either an acumen or intuition. I will say vigilance or wit for this one as well. And then any aptitudes that you think might upgrade it. Six successes. Okay. So as you're sort of comparing the note with the um, with the letter that you received, the immediate sense that you get is that the writing on the note is trying to copy any one of the different signatures. And it's sort of a messy job in doing so because all of their handwriting is so different, but that this particular handwriting is someone purposefully trying to farce it. Oh, I don't know who this came from. This isn't Earl. I would like to use uh, the madness angle. Okay. And search the room and look for something in the room that has been uh, concealed, but in other uh, realities uh, okay. is not. It allows me to uh, peer across the twilight veil into um, other iterations of the multiverse similar to our own, and I'm able to spot things that were otherwise hidden. And okay. I add a minute. Your eyes sort of look around the room that you're in here. You can sort of feel it as well, and you can see a little bit into it, but it's almost like there's a barrier where normally this ability sort of works for you fairly well. Mm -hmm. Here, you're finding that it's almost like something is recognizing that you are attempting to do this and is trying to block you. But you notice that there are sort of a, sort of a hot spot on where that box is, mm -hmm. as well as a spot behind where the upright piano is. Okay but you can't ascertain necessarily what it is. You just have a sense that there's something there. Okay. Who has the key at the time that she's doing this? I'm currently holding on to it. Okay, yeah, I was to gonna it. be asking for it, but I think at this point you still have it. Mm -hmm. You can also ascertain from this ability, there is some connection between the key that Melody is holding and one of the doors kind of opposite to where you are right now. Check that lock. And I wander over to the piano and just kind of inspect around it. Okay. Uh, and I look over at that door and I just kind of hand the key over to Eliza. And I'm like, I, I'm afraid I'm dreadfully a coward. Well, this place is a little strange. I don't think that is cowardice. I think it is prudence, but I do wonder when this was placed in the chest. I would like to use Janice's gaze. Okay. And see when did this happen? And I also have to add a minute to my clock. Similarly, you sort of focus in and center yourself onto this point, this ability within you, and you ascertain when was this key placed inside this chest. You cannot see entirely as it's very dark. You're almost sitting at this perspective of being inside the chest, almost like you are the key, seeing the appearance. You weren't necessarily as the key placed inside of this box, but that you have almost been made from it. And as you're sort of ascertaining this vision in you, you also then feel on your back a piece of paper form as well, which you can assume would be the note. She stiffens again. Um, you all right? Oh, this is very um, strange. I would like to reach out and just touch the chest. Okay. 
And do I, do I feel anything? Does anything happen? Considering I was being created by the chest just a moment ago. <laughs> As you sort of reach out and feel the chest, it doesn't feel any different than a normal chest would, per se. You can kind of feel almost like a hum. It's soft almost, like the box has an energy to it. Let's go see what this opens, okay? Absolutely. Um, the other woman, she mentioned this door over here, and I'll lead Eliza up to the door that Nicolette pointed out. Okay. I'm following behind. And Nicolette, as you are investigating the piano area, mm -hmm. um, please make me either acumen or intuition. Okay. Um, with, I will say vigilance or wit again for this one as well. Three successes. Three successes, okay. So as you're sort of investigating this area where the piano and um, where the piano sort of stands, you can see that there's something, there's almost like a um, pattern on the floor around it mm -hmm. where it looks like the piano has been moved, has been moved mm -hmm. but you don't see any purpose as to why. My running theory at this point is there whatever that thing I was seeing was is it's behind the piano on the wall but everybody's moving into the other room so basically after I confirm that it looks like the piano has been moved around don't say anything return to the rest of the ladies were you gonna play a little melody for us oh I thought about it but <laughs> something just doesn't feel right in this room and it seems like it's probably a good idea to go meet our hosts I completely agree Let's see what we're supposed to do in here. And I will place the key into the lock. I'm just assuming from what's been happening that this is what's supposed to happen. So okay. I'm not even gonna try investigating. So as you all are approaching the door that um, Nicolette pointed you towards, you see outside the room in the sort of hallway um, wall next to it, there is this golden frame with a painted portrait inside. There's a little plaque that says, Sunita Windsor, the Trapper. And you see this visage of a woman, hair sort of up in a small bun with a um, pink uh, hunting cap on, holding a rifle proudly sort of in her arms. You can see as well her foot proudly perched on top of a beastly looking skull. Do I know what kind of skull she is standing on? Does that look like a typical animal skull or? Make an acumen or intuition. Mm -hmm. And then I would say probably a wit skill. Could I use academics in this? Absolutely. Four hits. So as you're um, sort of looking over this painted portrait, um, you can see the skull kind of similarly to a lot of the taxidermied creatures in the lodge here, sort of look almost like a normal animal, but then there's parts of it that are sort of off. Wrong. Yeah, I can't really pinpoint it to an actual creature that I would know of. Interesting, she's gorgeous. But as you put the key in and turn the lock, the door opens and surprisingly, the smell inside is far different than the rest of the lodge. The other thing you notice is the temperature in here is far more pleasant. The winter cold almost feels like it's being ushered out by sun that sort of lives inside of this room. It's very nice. This sort of smell of something both savory and like cooked and seasoned food, as well as this sweetened maybe fruits of the mountain, richness of wine, all is sort of hitting you at once. And before you is a large table set for a party. Those of you, let's see, with aptitudes that would make you quick to notice something. Yes you are quickly able to place that there are 11 place settings on the dining table. The middle is full of these different foods from the marinated meats and roasted and herb dressed vegetables, jams, thick gravy, cut and creamy sort of cheeses and um, this sort of like crisp crust bread, mm. um, likely just baked, you can smell all of it. And above you, 
is a large sort of branch growing seemingly from the ground itself and it stretches over the ceiling. Um, and you can see the branches are covered in bright pink flowers. Every once in a while, a sort of petal or two drifting down, but almost like a force field is over the table. They never seem to land in any of the food. All around the room as well, there are baskets full of these like freshly picked and trimmed flowers, roses, peonies, wildflowers, all sort of sprouting from baskets and pots and vases. And at the head of the table, there is a more ornate looking chair that's empty, but you can see at their place setting is a scroll tied with a rich red ribbon over it. And in the corner sits a woman. From the portrait outside, you can ascertain that this is Sunita Windsor, the trapper. She looks mostly like her portrait, but her cheeks are a tad more sunken and the light kind of in her eyes is more dull. So as you sort of enter, you um, can hear the door kind of clearing behind you and closing. And as she sort of hears you all enter, her eyes sort of look up and meet you and, what are you doing here? Oh, you must be Miss Wins. I love your portrait outside. It's really beautiful. My name is Birdie. Earl asked me to be here. Who, who, who are you? We were invited to be here. Were you not informed that we were coming? No. Oh, Earl is so forgetful, I swear. Augustina uh, invited me. I'm Melody Cross, one of her friends. Invi invited? No, 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 no. You should not be here. You need to leave. I'll be pulling out my note. I'm gonna snatch it out of your hand and just... They phoned us and told us to come. They said they wanted to spend some time together. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Nobody would have contacted you. You need to leave. You need to get out of here. What's happening? She goes to sort of stand to address you. And as she does, the floor underneath her, you hear this pressure plate activating before this squeaking of metal sort of claps over the ankle of her foot. She sort of falls forward onto the floor. Is it a bear trap? It's a bear trap. Oh my goodness, Miss Winza. I rush over to her. I'm like, oh my God, are, are you okay? Um, uh, I'm immediately looking for something on the table that I can use to pry the bear trap open. While they're occupied with that? Yeah. I'm going to give you your note back and go, her name wasn't on any of the letters, so maybe we don't tell her we got those. No, I think that's very... Famous. It has something in there about interception. We don't want interception. There's a lot going on here. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We should talk about that more later. While I'm holding her up and supporting her however she's reacting, can I kind of real quickly with my larceny attribute give her a quick pat down to see if she's holding anything else that she's hiding? Sure. Make a coordination or intuition. Ooh, intuition. I'll let you pick from three skills. You can do reaction, vigilance, or wit. I'm gonna go with reaction. Okay. I got pretty good reactions. Can I add two more d8s to it with the six seconds? Sure. Would that now add a minute? A minute to your clock? That yeah, it it already looped me. Okay. <laughs> so I also have one distress die. Welcome. Welcome to distress dies. A four on the distress die. Okay. Uh, and four hits. Four hits. Okay. So you notice that as you're sort of patting her down, as you're sort of trying to attempt to assist her, all around the room are laid different traps. You're sort of trying to avoid them as well as you go over. From the distance that she is, I would say making it over to her would be a little bit difficult, but because you're trying to pat her down, I will say the thing that you can grab is what she is going for, which is her hunting rifle. Oh, yeah, I'll snatch that away from her. Just, hey, whoa, what are you doing, bud? You're in a bear trap. You don't need a gun. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and as, and as you're sort of rushing over and sort of like moving through these traps on the floor, she is struggling. It, her foot is sort of caught in this 
um, first trap. Is she screaming? Yes. Okay. And as she's like continuing to scoot forward, as she hasn't tried to pick herself up off the floor yet, her second knee sort of slides into another trap behind her and snaps over it with her hands waving over like, get out, you need to leave. And because you've now snatched her hunting rifle, her course has changed slightly and she is heading towards the head of the table. I'm looking for something to tourniquet as well. I'm jumping okay. up on the table. Okay. I'm not moving, but I'm watching as this happens. I think we all need to leave. Yeah, but we're gonna help you, Sunita. Just calm down. Nicolette, um, you're looking for something to pry the... Actually seeing her take the rifle, that's gonna be what I pry with. Right now I'm just looking for a tourniquet, something to tourniquet. And if the only thing available is the red ribbon on that scroll, <laughs> then I'm gonna pull it. Okay, so you're going towards the... Document. Head of the table. Okay. If you can please make me a intuition and reaction roll. While Nicoletta is moving, could since I'm closer to Sanita, can Melody kind of be like, hey, just take a breath. You really, really need to calm down right now. Something is obviously happening to you and it's about to be happening to us potentially. So we should probably work together and I have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do like a uh, charisma and manipulation to try and pull calmness out of her emotionally? Go for it. Because I am a mother, I do know how to manipulate. And then I have negotiation as an aptitude for okay. that upgrade. Mm -hmm. Three hits. You are also sort of trying to make your way towards the ribbon on the table, correct? Mm -hmm. um, you are making your way kind of through the dining room and as you're seeing um, Sunita on the other side having fallen into two of her own traps. Yeah. Is, you're sort of like stepping swiftly between them and you're able to make it to the head of the table. What is the arrangement of these traps? Are they like set in a circle around the table? Or are they just scattered? They're scattered. Okay. They're more random. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of space between them to sort of like Top tiptoe yeah. in sort of her desperation. So you need to step straight into oh. one and then yeah. fell into the other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One hit. One hit? Yeah, one good job. So as you're sort of speaking and you have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a gun. And you're attempting to calm her. You are not able to necessarily pull calmness from her, but I'll say that as she looks up at you, you see in her eyes something only really ever communicated to you when one of your children is trying to tell you something, but they don't quite know how to form the words or they don't know the words for it. Mm -hmm. And in this sort of like desperation, she's attempting to sort of tear her foot away from the first trap that she landed in. And you see as it sort of bends and breaks from the force and is now sort of just like flopping on the floor behind her. You made it to the documents. Okay. Are you just pulling the ribbon or are you picking up all of it? I've got a feeling that we're going to be making a break for it and not stay in this room. So I'm just gonna scoop all the documents and like tuck them into the waist of my skirt. Okay. Pulling the ribbon off the, uh, the scroll. Okay. It's funny that you say that because I've stayed at the door. Did the door to this room open into it or out of it? In. I'm And it closed behind us. And it, well, and that's the next thing I'm doing is as I watch all of you move, knowing that there's not much more I can do here, I'm gonna open the door to get us ready to get out of here. But I mm -hmm. also want to see, has anything changed through the door? You're attempting to open the door. Please make a strength and toughness roll. Wonderful, wonderful. Sure, that's fine. I'm so good at that. And I'm doing something on the table after this. Okay. Are you yes. <laughs> that is no successes and a four on the D4. A four on the D4, you're good. As you're sort of trying to open the door, you feel there's like some resistance there of 
it's not necessarily locked or like barricaded or anything. It just feels like when an old door gets kind of stuck. Mm. Um, you said all the food is set out on mm -hmm. the table. I am going to take one of the cloth napkins. Okay. Or actually I'm gonna take two cloth napkins in one of them, I'm gonna put a couple fruits, a couple vegetables. In another one, I'm going to take large pieces of whatever meat is available on the table mm -hmm. and tie them up and put them in my bag to have everyone else look at those later. And then I'm going to take a small piece of the meat and I want to smell it and taste it to see okay. if it is meat I would recognize. Okay. As you um, pick up a piece and you sort of smell it, it again smells very like it's been marinated, it's been properly salted, it's been mm -hmm. cooked to like this perfect red inside with the nice, you know. Medium rare. Yeah, nice crisp on the outside. Um, and it doesn't smell off, it doesn't smell like anything that you maybe haven't had before. Um, and as you bite into it, Almost this cross between something gamier, like a bison or a venison. I was about to say, like bison. Um, but then there's also sort of this like odd tenderness mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Like it's been really worked to make it like, it's delicious. Trying it, there's, you don't suffer anything. It's, it's fairly good. Okay, I still don't trust this food. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything from my vantage point, unique about the chairs at each place setting? Anything making them individual? Any markings that would indicate an owner? Yeah. Make a, I will say acumen or intuition. I will let you pick from, because you're trying to kind of do this quickly, you can do reaction or vigilance or wit. We'll do reaction. Is there, you said there were drinks on the table as well. Mm -hmm. Like pitchers of like wine. There's wine bottles and I'm glasses. taking a wine bottle as okay. well. Okay, perfect. I'm grabbing a uh, set of uh, forks and knives. Uh, three hits. As you're sort of like scanning over the table and looking, you can't see any sort of nameplates or anything particularly special. Except for, it seems like four of the table settings are newer than others. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, okay. Um, Nicolette, you grabbed the documents and stashed them, and you also have the ribbon. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm handing you this. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, thank you. And while this is going on, I haven't moved. I've tried to open the door, and now having trouble with the door, I'm gonna quickly look at everybody and say, we're not getting out of here immediately. I'm gonna need some help, but please be very careful. This place is filled with traps. Uh, we need to take care of her. We need to do this slowly and calmly because we're not just getting out of here. Birdie, start yeah. throwing things from the table onto these traps. Oh, Trigger I them. love this. I'm gonna start picking up play settings and just chucking them down onto each trap's uh, spring. Okay. Plate. That's awesome. Um, uh, Frankie, Melody. find China. <laughs> Melody's gonna call out, wait, 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 wait. She's scared. She set these traps for a reason. Yeah. This could be the only safe place. It's not that safe. <laughs> well, <laughs> as, you, as you throw the first one, I'll look over at Sunita and say, which ones do we need to disable to get to you, but not disable them all? Make a... I will say a charisma and either empathy or manipulation check. As I take the ribbon off, I'm just going to look at the very bottom. Okay. <gasps> Make an assessment, close it, tuck it. Okay. I got two successes. I got a one on the D4. Uh, for reference, I'm using empathy okay. instead of manipulation, but they're the same role, so. Okay. Now, as you are briefly speaking, and as you're throwing the sort of whatever you can to trigger the traps, and they're all kind of snapping around the room, the other thing that you notice is on that branch above you where the flowers are, uh -oh. icicles melting rapidly and falling 
as they do, and you're sort of over there by Sunita, you see as she tries to sort of bring herself back up onto like her legs so she can walk. And as her one, the one that had been caught by the one in the knee, as it steps back onto the flat of the foot, you hear this click against the floor and you realize that her leg bone dislocated far and is now sticking out of the heel of her second foot. Oh, Sunita. And the traps all sort of breaking around you and going off are shaking that top sort of branch. Icicles are falling and you see as this giant one, very cone-like in shape, falls directly over where she is sort of beginning to stand. And you see as this down into her skin and her skull don't pierce, but sort of give way as instead of, and sort of stretching and morphing into the shape of this cone, her eyes sort of bulging over, the jaw sort of dislocating, and the forehead splits just a little bit. She regains sort of her, post, her posture and comes kind of standing onto these like shaking legs, that bone still sticking out from the one, and the other foot that's been broken at the ankle just kind of dragging behind her. You see as she just like in this distorted voice looks at you as you've stashed the documents and says, do not try and find anything else. And you see as she is also grabbing things from around her and is trying to set off traps around you as well. I'm just gonna reiterate, Sunita, I do have a gun right now, so please just stay over there. And I'm gonna start making my way back towards the door. And would you say we're trapped right now in this room? Yes, you would be. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's another minute. <laughs> Uh, Melody has lost all regard for personal safety, I think, at hearing, at A, that. <laughs> B, B, hearing, hearing that. that we're not going anywhere anytime soon. Melody just turns with the gun, looks up at you on the table, drops the gun, and starts running towards the door. Like, okay, time to go. It's time to go, everyone. And she's panically pulling on the, the door handle, trying to get it to undo. So now that you're running, who would be the closest to Sunita at this point? Uh, probably I, still you, because I'm on the table I was moving to near the door, okay. trying to get her. So as you're, um, as you're standing there and you begin running and she's sort of focused on you, you see that icicle from her head that sort of pierced in. She grabs onto the sides of it and kind of pulls it with this like wet, slick, and just throws it down onto all of the traps surrounding you. If you would please make me an intuition and reaction roll. Sure. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Two hits. Two hits, okay. So as she sort of grabs onto this big cone sort of of ice and slams it down onto the ground next to you. You almost step back in preparation for it, but then remember that there are traps behind you and you sort of catch yourself before you step into any of them. Mm -hmm. However, as it shatters, you hear the sort of ice, you know, cling out, and then something heavier from inside of it clink onto the floor and you can see it kind of just floating there on the floor between a couple of traps next to you. What does it look like? From here, it looks like another icicle maybe, but then perhaps also a branch. You're not entirely sure. Having seen that she is not okay, and I cannot think of a scientific explanation for whatever that is, uh, goal is now to get the hell out of the room, but curiosity. Okay. I'm going to reach down and grab whatever came out of that um, icicle. Okay. 
and then make for the door. Please make another intuition and reaction roll. Ooh, okay, okay. Four hits. So as you're sort of like going to reach over for whatever it is that landed in the trap, you sort of look at all of all of them there around it and you sort of pull your sleeve yeah. up just a bit and reach in as well. And from between the traps, oh. Oh. pick this up off of the floor. Oh, like, wow. That is amazing. Okay, okay. You're running towards the door. Yeah. I've stopped pulling on it, partially because I'm failing at it, but mostly because I'm now fascinated by what's going on with mm -hmm. whoever that is in the corner. I still haven't moved, but I'm gonna try, because it's very obvious that this person is concerned about our safety. Uh, I'm gonna try once again to say, we need information, please. What is going on? Give us something. We were invited here. If we're not supposed to be here, then we're as trapped as all the traps that you've put down. Please make me another, I would say another charisma roll. Um, and then again, you can use empathy or manipulation. Uh, I'm gonna be doing six seconds. Okay. To get myself two more DAs because I really want to get some information. Well, that's only one success, but nothing on the D4 at least. Okay, <laughs> one success. So as you sort of speak out to Sunita, you see the kind of eyes on the opposite sides of the head sort of focus in on you. And she sort of tilts the head just a bit. And she, if you want it, information, I'm sorry. And you drop the gun. She reaches forward and picks it up. And as she aims it, she turns invisible. What? So uh, I didn't know about that. I don't think any of us knew about that. Madness angle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is she in the room still? Yes. Okay. She is in the room. And after she's turned invisible, she has taken the gun and she is aiming it straight for you. Got it. I am running towards the door and trying to self-defense class kick uh, through the wood. Okay. <laughs> Please make me a, um, I would say strength and um, toughness. And then whatever, if you have- And I'm um, upgrading one because I have athletics. Go for it. And I will say, as you get up to the door next to Melody, you kind of hear uh, a difficulty breathing coming from Melody having just run. It sounds like. <sighs> Got it. Like, like it, it's getting away from breath. her. Yeah. Yeah. That's only two successes. Two successes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you are sort of like trying to kick your way through this door, you don't break through it, but you can feel sort of where that. Um, where the sort of mechanics go to keep it in place, they bust and you move the wood just enough. And you're also busting it kind of off of the hinges because it's going the opposite way that it was when you came in. Yeah. But nevertheless, you sort of like shove your foot through it and you feel as it opens. All right, let's go. <laughs> so for this, I will need um, all of you to roll a coordination and reaction. Okay. 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 It, is this something athletics related? Yes, you can you can upgrade with athletics or um, if you have any sort of combat skill. I got two successes. Two success. Three. Two success. Four. Things had kind of kicked off, but now you're all sort of trying to escape the room. Um, we'll go by initiative order to just kind of make it a little bit easier. So Nicolette, what are you doing? I can see her. I can see she's pointing the gun at me. Uh, how close am I to her? Not far. This isn't a huge room. I would okay. say probably a little bit farther than we are right now. Okay. I am going to uh, move forward and using this knife that I just pulled out of the ground, okay. I'm going to stab at her, like cut her arm so that she can't 
hold the end of the rifle. Please make me a strength and toughness okay. attack roll. That's two successes. Two successes? Yes, two okay. hits. And then she is going to attempt to dodge. And I'm ducking under the uh, muzzle. As you are sort of collecting yourself and you push forward, she manages to sort of dodge mostly out of the way, mm -hmm. but you can see as the dagger scrapes across the side of where her skin would be on, on kind of her side. Okay. Though she is invisible, the rest of you can hear as she sort of cries out in this pain of being slashed. <sighs> She's still here. Drop the gun. And that, that's, I guess, what I'm doing. Birdie. Uh, so the door is clearly open now. Yes. I'm gonna fling the door open and shove Melody out of the door. door. Ah. <laughs> Hold the remnants of this door back and just go, come on, we gotta go. We gotta get out of here. At least out of this room, come on. Be right there. And that's my turn. Eliza. I've heard the cry and so she's still in the room. I'd started to look around. You'd said that, so the icicles came from the branch, but there were also flowers that were, yes. the petals were dropping. Mm -hmm. Do, in that quick uh, glance when we entered the room, did I recognize what those pink flowers were? I mean, I would say just from general idea that you have, um, these flowers are particularly from um, a, an area in Southeast and South Asia that are growing here. They're not anything magical per se. But they're not native. They're not native here, no. I'm looking over at where the scuffle is happening and I would like to reach down and grab a petal or two that have fallen nearby. If I can grab those, I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna go, it's still not too late to stop and come with us. And I'm just trying to get the invisible person to not be invisible anymore. Okay. I don't know if I know that I know you're you attacking. You see my arm up holding something. Yeah, and, and I heard I the crawl. slashed with this and she screamed. Yeah. It is not too late. We we all need to get out of here. Will you stop trying to reason with the crazy lady and let's go? I need to know what's going on here. Not that bad. Please make another charisma roll. Okay. I'm gonna say with empathy this time because I don't believe you're trying to manipulate her. I'm not. I will add on a D8 to your roll. Okay, I'm also gonna spend six seconds and add on two more D8s. Okay. Are there any unsprung traps near me? There are a couple, yes. Yeah. Cool. I've got three successes and a four on the D4. As you sort of pick up the pedals and you say this, Nicolette, you cannot necessarily make out the full features of Sunita any anymore, mm -hmm. but you feel that the weight of the rifle, she's holding it a little bit softer. She's relaxed a little. A little bit. I mean, she's still getting stabbed, so she's tense, <laughs> but. And her eyes sort of look down at you, or you kind of assume she turns her head a little bit towards you, and she just leave. All right. You feel as though she is not attempting to kill you any further. Can I take the rifle with me? Can I pull it from her hands? Because it hasn't been shot, so the barrel isn't hot. Are you trying to do this swiftly, or are you trying- Oh, I'm, I'm getting out of the room, yeah. <laughs> then I will say either intuition or coordination okay. with probably a reaction roll. Okay. We are leaving her completely defenseless. Is this something I could help with since I'm trying to reason with her and get her to, I'm trying to get her to leave, but if she's still in protection mode, would this be something in where she won't, I could help with her not fighting her taking the rifle? Sure. I will say if you would like. I um, do have centering also. So oh, I do too. if I could like, as I'm taking it, just kind of give her a look like, we're going to do this, but I'm taking this gun with me in just kind of a calm sort of, kind of that look that tells you we both know you're not leaving this room. Mm -hmm. Let us survive. What'd you roll? Two hits. So if you would like to assist, technically you can't use it in combat, but we'll, you know, we'll kind of go the rules a little bit. You can add um, D8s onto her check. Each of them costs three seconds and you can do up to six seconds around. 
I will do six seconds. Okay, so you can add, so roll two more d8s. Okay. okay. Hit, hit. Okay, so as you sort of send her and also the assistance of um, Eliza coming from the other side of the room, you feel this sort of, almost like she's at the mercy of you mm -hmm. and she allows you to take the rifle and she sort of looks at you and just end it. All right. Uh, I just nod at her and I turn around and book it out of the room. Okay. And as I'm passing, I hand you the rifle. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? I don't know. I don't know how to shoot. So, <laughs> Melody, you're out of the room. Mm -hmm. Where are you at? I'm holding the door so that when everyone comes through, I'm going to close it back as much as gotcha. I can. And then both of you have run out or are on the way of we're, running out? I guess we're on the way. Well, you would have passed me and I would have waited a beat because she, the uh, Sunita is still invisible, right? Yes. So, and I don't know what's going on. At least I can't see her. I'm still hoping she's moving in this direction. So I'll, I'll wait a beat and then leave. So as you um, all sort of get to the place where you can leave out of this room and Bertie, you're sort of holding the door and Eliza, you wait for just a moment and you don't seem to hear anything responsing. Responsing? Responding. <laughs> and I will, I'll leave. So as you exit, you close the door? Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you close the door, you um, sort of hear that almost like how it sets back into place of the door. And you see in the center of the room, in the foyer now, where you kind of return to, the box at the center pedestal is still open. I'm gonna rush over to the box and look in it. Looking inside the box, you can see there is place where you had picked up the key, as well as a sort of long, slot for something and then a couple of open chambers for objects the box is seemingly empty hey uh what's what's the the knife thingy that you get i don't know come here does the shape in the box align with the knife it looks like it would fit mm -hmm. try try putting that right there and then we're all gonna take a step back i'm not there can i be looking for a cup <laughs> <laughs> In the foyer area? Yeah, just like anywhere. I'm opening cabinets and being like, oh, well, that's cup shaped. You could probably find a kind of dirty cup just kind of discarded on the floor. I'm gonna start cleaning it while everyone's talking. Before you uh, put that in there, let's just take a moment because that was um, a thing. Mm -hmm. And I think she's still in there. Mm -hmm. And before you put that in there, do, do you mind? Because I would love to know when this was made. I'm using Janice's gaze. You, once again, sort of focus and center yourself. Similarly to how you almost became the perspective of the key earlier, you feel as Sunita is holding your sort of form and you can see her sharpening the sort of edges of the blade. And you can see as well around her and around you are maybe four other figures that are here. And they all sort of are in a similar vicinity. And then further back, just a little, another figure, well-worn hat, dressed somewhat nicely, but you can see his face is older. And as he sort of walks over, he looks and you can hear him speak for just a moment. And he says, are you finished with it, Sunita? Because we got to do the other parts. And that is where your vision ends. What? Other parts? You gasp a lot, I, Eliza. Have there not been a lot of things to gasp about in the last couple of... Well, yeah, but you're kind of doing it at weird times. Yeah, you kind of just do it while you're looking at I, things. I get a sense of things sometimes, and I wanted to take a look at this. And I'll walk over to hand this to you, because you've asked for it. But I also look in the box and I see the spots for it. There's other things. I don't know what this yeah. is for, but there's other... She made this. Look at, look at, I mean, the craftsmanship is amazing. I don't know what it's made out of, but she made this for a reason that has something to do with this box. That would seem so. 
before you put it in there, because I don't know what's about to happen. I don't either, that's the fun part. I know, I'm, I'm not saying we don't want to put it in there, but are you, you okay? Because you look... Oh, she is most definitely not okay. And that's understandable know, with I what just happened. I think I'm fine. And there's a, she's drinking out of a cup of water that's now full. As I, while y'all were talking, she activated Oasis to give herself a cup of water to calm down a little bit. Where did you get the water? Oh, there's a sink over there. Anyway, okay, yes, I'm the water fine. works. Someone help me move this piano. I will hand you the knife. <laughs> and I'll say, we're gonna apparently go move a piano and uh, we'll be back in a second. Hold off Did on- Did you lock the door? Well, the door was broken. The door to the dining room? Yeah. Oh, it's broken. We can't lock it with the no. key? If we look over, is it still broken? It's not not broken. It looks like there's some damage having been done to it, but it also doesn't look like it's openable again. Okay. You know, wedged it in good. All right. Piano. Piano? Why, why are you moving a piano? I have a feeling. I've had a lot of those recently, so let me help. Mm. And we'll move the piano. I am not strong. Neither am I. So I imagine there's a lot of Either both of you can make a roll, and then we can just kind of like tally up the hits, or if one wants to assist by paying for d8s with seconds. I'm okay with either. Do you have a okay. preference? I am, um... This will be a toughness and strength roll. Which I have nothing in. Yeah, really. I have one in each, so... I have one in each. <laughs> All right, I'm awesome. happy to give you seconds if you... Because it's your why idea. Why I do the donation of seconds? I mean, why? Why would you want to do donations <laughs> and seconds? Do you want us to help you? Because there are four of us. You, <gasps> two, you <laughs> two are the main lifters, if you know what I mean, and... Sure. If, if you don't mind holding off on sticking a knife in a box, I would really appreciate it. All right, so all of us are now doing this. So. And I will give my half of the duo liftings uh, the six, full six seconds, two D8s to your okay. check. And I'll give you two D8? Uh, if you're helping. You I'm can. not helping at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Four hits. The three of you combined are attempting to sort of move and shift this piano. I think the way I would be helping is ducking underneath to make sure that the, as most pianos are on wheels, making sure that those wheels are not locked. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And so if it doesn't have wheels on the bottom, just making sure that there isn't some way to help move it that way. Since you're down there, you see at this sort of junction, there seems to be the piano is somehow connected to the floor. So as the two of them are trying to sort of like strength it out and move it, it's not budging. Wait, 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 wait. I kick it. Uh, oh, sorry. This is, this is attached to the floor. We are not moving this without a hacksaw, I don't think. I start hitting keys. Okay. I'm looking for bing, 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 something. Bing, bing, bing. I'm looking for a button because I know this moves. So if it's attached, there and I'll I'll say this. Here, if it's I, attached, there must be a mechanism. I can play a song, perhaps. If I don't play, the 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 key striking was just a, l a little scarier than the woman. Well, before before you do. I want to go back and see what's We're happening. We're holding off on a lot of things. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot, and there's a lot I want to investigate, but, um, um, Birdie, hmm? do you not want to put the knife in the box? I, I wanted to 15 minutes ago, but I was going to let you guys futz with the piano. I, I appreciate you letting us futz with the piano, but before, let's, let's, <sighs> let's I'm worried if we story. put this in the box, we have to leave the room. We won't have another opportunity to get to whatever is going on here. You think another key is gonna show up and we're gonna be able to go into another room? I do. Oh, it's like an Agatha Christie book. I love those. I believe those are not quite as scary. Not quite as... People die in them, Eliza. Yeah, but not in the way that people are apparently being attacked here. Problem is people aren't dying here. I don't know about That's what's going on. That's an even bigger mystery. Yeah. Anyways, um, 
Play something. Check the pedals, too. I'll uh, play uh, the flight of the bumblebee. <laughs> so as you're doing this, and you're sort of running your hands and your fingers over the keys, you feel a couple of them you cannot press. What kind of piano was it? It's an upright, so it's not like a grand, like a with the big tabley part it's on it. The box one. It's yeah, that you would have to pull. Okay. Um, these keys, I mark the keys somehow, like scratch it out. I don't know much about p pianos. I know how to play them. I don't know how to build them or what to do with them. I open the top. Okay. And can you push the key? Does it go down? At As all? you go to open the top, uh -oh. it's. You cannot move it. Oh, there's no... Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. huh. How do they tune it? <laughs> this is not a piano that needs that kind of tuning. How many of those keys don't press? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them. Do they correlate to any specific notes? Looking at them, you would assume that if you played them, there might be like a a melody that you could get out of them, <laughs> um, but nothing like particular. Okay. Okay, because my thought was like the num or the letters of the notes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do here. I guess put the knife in the box. Maybe we'll figure that out. I'm not going to let go of it. I'm going to set it and keep my hand on it. Okay. You set and you keep your hand there. Nothing happens. I'm just gonna take it back out. Well. That was my idea. I thought you were putting it in the box. I did. You didn't do anything. Did you let go of it? If I let go of it, what if the box shuts and then we don't have a pointy object? But That's you didn't really put it in the box if you didn't let go of it. I'll put it back in and hover my hand. Like, <laughs> hand still in the box. Okay. I love it. So as you... I love Birdie. As you put the, the dagger in and you sort of hover your hand there, you see for a moment that the top of the lid begins to close. Grab it back out. Okay. It's gonna take it if we do it. It's a very rude box. It is a very rude box and I'm gonna reach out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna look like I'm examining the lid and I'm gonna say, I wonder when this was built. Okay. Do Janice's gaze on the box. It's like a heavy hit to your minutes. <laughs> I know, but I need to know what's going on here. That's the only way. As you reach forward and touch this box again and sort of focus and center, you feel again from the perspective this time of that old man that you had seen in your vision. And you feel against your skin, but you're a box. Him sort of coming up to this to this box and scratching and prying and sort of picking up tools and attempting to bust it and attempting to try and open it and gets more and more feverish before he sort of, you can't trust anyone these days and turns and leaves. Oh. This is a very interesting box. And I want to look where he was scratching and prying. Are there any marks still left on this box that I can see? It, this box looks like it was very nicely made and you can see the texture raked over it over and over again, just causing so much distress to the texture of the box. I think it's a good thing that you decided to not leave it in there because look, look at this and I'll show where those scratches are. Oh, others have tried to get into this box when it's closed and have... It just opened for us. It, it did, it didn't it, which... So what if the knife is important? Well, I, mean, I mean, I don't think anybody would go through all this trouble making it if it wasn't important. Agreed. Perhaps it's safest. We did box. kind of mess up that lady pretty bad. I feel like we shouldn't get rid of this just yet. In fairness, I think she might have had something to do with that? I don't think anyone is to blame. Let's put it that way, but <laughs> certainly... I did stab her. She... Yeah, I meant to ask you about that because she went all clear and then you did something and heard her scream. How'd you know to do that? 
I heard the shuffle of her feet on the floor. Huh. That's real interesting. But she did disappear. Yes, she did. You all saw that. I didn't mm -hmm. see that. She was. That's silly. I thought she had just somehow vanished like a magician's trick, but then when that happened. I'm looking for the front door. Is it there? Mm hmm. Okay. As you ascertain the front door. Yeah. Uh oh. Looking out of it, it is pitch black. You cannot see anything. Would you do me a favor? Mm hmm. Would you go to the door and look at the sky? Okay. I go to the front door and put my... Is there a window on this front mm -hmm. door? There's the that, glass? that glass window on the front door. Can I see out? Is it like that tinted fog? You All said? you can see outside it's black. is black. I, it's, it's too dark outside. Do you want me to try and open the door? Yes. I open the door and stick my head out. You are met with a wall of snow. So update on the weather. <laughs> I just kind of let the door open wider. Oh, How's that, that is snowed in. I remember that. It was raining when we got here, wasn't it? Well, yeah, and if rain gets too cold, it turns to snow. We've been here for less than an hour. Even if we had snow drifts, it couldn't have built up that much. You also notice that any snow that you are moving, mm -hmm. if it sort of begins to fall down, it's almost like more snow is filling its filling place. It? And it's starting to kind of flood into the front door a little bit. Can I like take a handful out of the wall and just kind of hold it for a little bit? Does it melt, start to melt mm -hmm. or does it? Okay. It acts like normal snow. So once it's like a liquid, can I use Oasis again to see if it has any diseases or poisons in it to prevent us from leaving? Okay. As you um, touch it and check for poison or disease, you don't sense anything necessarily um, harmful about it. Um, but as you're sort of looking at it and looking at the door and how it's kind of coming into the house, you feel like it's rapidly snowing. I'm gonna close the door. <laughs> well, we can't get out that way anyway, so we might as well keep whatever heat we got in here in, because... Why don't we start a fire? I, uh, I'm not a big fan of fires. How are we gonna stay warm? Is, is there a fireplace in here? In the center room? There yes. is not. So, it's, it's a map of the house. We're looking, I think, for four more keys. One will be a stag, a boar, a bee, and a fish. I'm a fish like my Earl. Mr. Clement's a fisherman. Truffle, boar, fish, fish. Fish. What, what does the person you know, what's their profession? Oh, um, she's a, 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 a taxidermist. And she starts pointing at the all stats. Mine's a tana. How close are you with Augustina? I think we were relatively close. I think uh, we were both married at the same time. Like, we both had the weddings at the same venues. We ran into each other and we became friends through that. And we just stayed in touch with each other and became like tea time friends. Okay. Like you, once a month. Meeting. You also know that along with animal taxidermy, she does bug taxidermy as well. Oh, she also does insect, like, display. Each of these is tied to one of the persons who invited us. Mm. Um, Mr. DuPont is a truffler who used pigs to find truffles. There is that is... where they come from? Yeah. Huh. There is a boar on the bedroom I think we have to find him or a key. Oh, which uh, one's the, the fish? The dining room we were in had the flower on the key, and there's a flower on the picture of the room. So I think each room corresponds with someone we know, and the key for each one is going to be somehow affiliated with a fish or an insect. Um, the key came from the box. I believe... We're not going to get another key until the box gets the oh. consumes the night. Well, 
Oh, damn. I'm just going to ah. put it in the box. I'm sorry. If you would please put it in the box. Oh. 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 I am unsettled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. So, as you place the dagger in the box, the box seemingly closes by itself. And that is where we are going to leave this episode. Oh, <laughs> oh so my good. god, that's so great. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you so much for visiting the Velvet Lodge and joining us for dinner. Was it people? Did she eat people? <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. I you hate people. <laughs> There's food in my purse. We will find <laughs> out. I would love to take a look at that food once we have a moment. <laughs> We shall see you on the next chapter of the Velvet Lodge, where we see where these colorful group of ladies end up. <laughs>